as a teacher of human anatomy and physiology for speech language pathologists and audiologists, I'm often asked the question, why should I study this subject matter? And even more commonly, after students have committed to study it, they ask, how do I go about it in the best possible way? To address that question, I've prepared this tutorial. First, the why question. Why study and learn human anatomy and physiology? There are really three answers to that question. The study of human anatomy and physiology is foundational to the health sciences in general, and it's especially important for speech pathology and audiology. Second, they are profoundly interrelated to each other, anatomy and physiology are, and the concepts of human anatomy and physiology pervade the entire curriculum, every part of it, for future speech pathologists and audiologists. Third, if you have a good foundation in human anatomy and physiology to build on, you'll be better prepared for all the rest of the SLP AUD curriculum, which is mandated by the American Speech Language Hearing Association and its governing and accrediting bodies. So that's the answer to the why question, and we'll come back to some of the details. Next, there's the how question. How can I best study and learn anatomy and physiology? One, build on what you already know. Learn the technical talk and the concepts through the language of human anatomy and physiology. You do this a little by little. By the yard it's hard, but inch by inch, human anatomy and physiology is a cinch. Second point, keep the whole picture in mind as you're working through the complex processes one term at a time. Deal with the whole subject matter one manageable bite at a time. Like the old joke about the elephant, how do you eat one of them? You eat them one bite at a time. Third, use the diagrams and the animations, read the text, remember the old rule of the schoolmasters from the Middle Ages. They said, legge, 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 ora legge, et le legge. The translation is, read, 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 pray, read, and reread. So, you've got to be willing to go back to the material multiple times in order to understand it. And keep your eyes open for new diagrams, animations, YouTubes, and let us all know about them. We can all learn together. Next, let's take the why question in a little more detail. If you're not convinced that human anatomy and physiology is foundational to the whole curriculum, maybe this slide and the information on it will help to convince you. ASHA, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, mandates the study of what are called the big nine subject areas or domains of speech language pathology and audiology. In speech pathology, they are articulation, language, hearing, swallowing, cognition, voice, fluency, speech, and augmentative, assistive communication. For an inside view of those, you can take a look at um, the link that's given here on the screen. Next, uh, think about these big nine one at a time. For articulation, which is top, front, and center, followed by language and hearing. The movable articulators, the brain, the hearing systems of the human anatomy and physiology are obviously crucial to the subject matter of those three domains. How about swallowing voice fluency and speech? Again, movable body parts and the brain that controls them are crucial. Human anatomy and physiology is foundational. For cognitive functions and for the use of augmentative and assistive devices that SLPs and AUDs must learn about in the ASHA curriculum, again, the brain and the systems of human mobility and sensory perception are central. When we ask, how do human beings understand words, actions, facial expressions, symbols on a screen or keyboard, the brain and the sensory systems are crucial, and again, human anatomy and physiology is foundational. Bottom line, Human anatomy and phys physiology is foundational to all of the big nine areas of the ASHA curriculum. So this course is foundational to all the courses that SLPs and AUDs will take downstream in the ASHA curriculum. That's the answer to the why. Why study this material? Because it's foundational. Now let's look at this first element, building on terms you already know in a little more detail. How do you do that? 
First, learn the language of ANP by mapping the unfamiliar Greek and Latin terms as well as abstract terms in English and other languages. Sometimes they'll use a German term for something in human anatomy. Map it onto familiar concepts. Use what you already know as a scaffolding, like a ladder you can climb up on to reach a level that was otherwise over your head. For instance, take the word cytology, just to pick one out of the vast range of terminology that's out there in human anatomy and physiology. If you take it letter by letter from the Greek language, kutologia, which is that process of taking it letter by letter is called transliteration. In other words, we transliterate from Greek into English the word kutologia to get cytology. In Greek, we find the root cyto or kuto in Greek means cell or container. And logia means the study of. Therefore, we know that cytology means the study of cells. And both of the root terms will be met up with many times in the study of human anatomy and physiology. Finally, by acquiring such terms, mapping them onto their meanings, we're building the foundation for understanding human anatomy and physiology. And if we build that foundation strongly, you have a good foundation to build on for all the rest of the ASHA curriculum. Next, consider point two about how to master A and P. Keep the whole picture in mind. Zygotebody.com provides an excellent digital basis for exploring the anatomy of the human body without actually having to cut up a corpse. There is an excellent tutorial at zygotebody.com showing you how to use that program and it's reasonably inexpensive. Second, there are also many animations and explanatory YouTube resources that can be accessed on almost any aspect of human anatomy and physiology. Some of them are better than others, so be careful not to waste your time with unresearched materials. Look for the ones that have the references or that are consistent with what you're learning in the course and consistent with the research that's cited in the course book. You can also use the Web of Science, PubMed, the Oxford English Dictionary, contains a wealth of information, even about technical medical terms. Also, you can use medical dictionaries. Even a Google search or a wiki search can afford many resources and can often be used to address specific questions about the terminology of human anatomy and physiology or about specific parts of the human anatomy and physiology and so forth. The key is understanding the terminology, working upward from there, and always looking back to the larger perspective of what you know about human communication and language acquisition. Finally, on the how-to question, how do you master this material? Third point, use multiple resources. First and foremost is reading the text. We've already stressed that. Use the study questions, both the multiple choice questions and the open-ended questions, to help you break into the text, to take it apart, to make sure you understand the concepts. Next, do the tutorials, view the animations. For the parts you don't understand, check the terminology first. Any word or phrase you don't know, look it up in the book with a digital search. See what the text says. Probably you'll be able to figure out the meaning by just following the term through the text with a digital search. If that doesn't work for you, Look up the term in something like the Oxford English Dictionary or Medical Dictionary or just you do a wiki search to see if you can sort it out. Then, as soon as the term is clear, go back to the text, animation, or diagram and continue working through it until you understand the whole picture, the process, or its functions. Test your own developing knowledge as you go along by making certain that the terminology you're using fits the facts you're applying that terminology to. If the facts and the terms agree and they're consistent with your reading and with all of the sources of material you're consulting, then you know you're home free. If they're not consistent, then you need to try to make adjustments in your own understanding of the language of the human anatomy and physiology and how it fits the facts. In the end, you will still have questions because a great deal of what's being studied in molecular biology Genetics, epigenetics, human proteomics is raising all kinds of questions that are yet to be answered. 
But the foundation you build in human anatomy and physiology in studying this course will determine to a great extent how well you understand the rest of the ASHA curriculum and how you're able to put it together in clinical practice. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and thank you for working your way through it.